Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to discuss a couple uh, additional things which related to previous video about uh, Azure and JMeter with uh, release pipelines. A um, couple of things uh, need to be uh, considered if you decide to use a self-hosted agent. Previous video was related to uh, Microsoft Azure hosted agent, meaning the actual machine is located in Microsoft Cloud. And uh, those uh, servers uh, have already set up uh, necessary components like uh, Python, uh, some of those uh, require the C++ uh, build-up utility. Uh, so I'd like to share with you uh, configuration uh, procedure, how to uh, overcome the issues. So first of all, uh, let's review the errors I was getting. So first arrow I have got with the uh, use Python a component. Uh, for my purposes was Python 3.85. Uh, I also had the same error with 3.6 Python. And arrow actually was saying that version of that specific architecture uh, did not match any version in agent tool directory and it's actually asking for version in that specific directory so looking into the uh, Microsoft uh, help uh, I discovered that that specific uh, setup need to be done on the agent machine with specific directory structure here is I going to show what that is. So we log into agent machine. Uh, we're going to navigate to specific directory, which is agent one pool. And as you can see, it has a couple of components which we are required to use. So first of all, a JMeter will be downloaded from the uh, uh, depositories available on Microsoft Azure uh, but Python for some reason is not getting uh, configured correctly and downloaded in order to do that and bypass that we need to install Python whatever version you desire to use in, and it's recommended uh, no less than 3.6 version you need to install in your agent machine and then create a directory in work tool area with name Python, then create a directory with version of your Python, create empty file, which is x64.complete, and then create another directory x64. That directory should contain all files related to your Python, Python executable and such. So when you're installing your Python, pay attention where it's getting to. Then you will need to go and copy those files into that directory. As additional step, we will need to add environmental variables. And that variable will be agent underscore tools directory and will be pointed to our agent one work tool that is important when uh, pipeline start initiating uh, components installation uh, into the cache uh, it will know by default where to look so next one uh, error which we uh, received after our common problem with use Python uh, we got error with install Taurus and that error complaining about that it's required to have a specific version of C++ component 
it says right here right so it's required Microsoft Visual C++ 14 and how to get it it's actually explained it here you need to get it from uh, build tools of Visual Studio so again we will go and to the our agent machine and, and install C++ build tool so after we overcome all our issues uh, which be honest with you required a little research and tries and errors um, we add additional components into our release pipeline so first one is the uh, email notification and we set up a flip-flop sort of trigger one is passed when the previous uh, task is complete and one is fail when its previous task is failed so when this one after successfully succeeding execution of jmeter script is uh, successful and pass it will trigger this one and that one will be skipped so if this one failed then this one will be skipped and this one will be uh, triggered and the last one we uh, put the published test results. Uh, we find it is pretty beneficial to see uh, progress of our load tests on the system. Uh, I'm gonna describe some things in details, specifically for running JMeter script. So we're going to uh, run Taurus, and if you remember from previous uh, video we set up the uh, reporting and pass fail criteria uh, it is uh, described in the uh, <coughs> uh, Taurus get Taurus.org documentation pass and fail uh, it's pretty self-explanatory so in our case we are setting up that if one specific page uh, average response time is more than 6,000 milliseconds for 30 seconds then consider it's fail so in fact we're using three different pages and parameters the same and another couple parameters we say that consider test failed if those specific pages have an error rate about 4% for 10 seconds so we have six uh, thresh threshold uh, conditions which our tasks need to meet right that that another one I want to concentrate on published results uh, I'm going to show you how that beneficial in our case So now we're going to take a look in test plan and it has the uh, menu option called runs. So when you click on it, you'll see a group of runs uh, which were successful and some of them not that successful. So let's concentrate on those two. So this one, as you can see, has two arrows and this one is not. So when you're clicking on complete item, it's actually showing you a progress of your test, right? You can look at the uh, fail or pass items by selecting test results, and it will show you exactly where uh, your load is failed, your test case failed. And uh, you can see actually in the error message it stated that it failed because of average time was greater than thousand milliseconds try to move it a little bit so you can see right here it's ran for more than 37 seconds this one for 38 seconds so that's why uh, our test failed 
I think it is very beneficial. Uh, you can <clears throat> look at the uh, successful RAM. And if you look in test cases, there is no error messages and everything looks fine. So I th thought uh, I have sort of an obligation to add this uh, appendix or addition to my previous video that uh, anyone who decide to use a self-hosted agent for your load processes, uh, you need to be aware of uh, those two things uh, which uh, I encounter uh, while I was setting up the uh, self-hosted agents. Uh, with Microsoft uh, agents, I did not have any issues. It was just went significantly well. So uh, thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoy it. Uh, don't forget to like it. Bye.